Okay. Okay. Well, I'm pleased to be joined by Stephanie Lee, the uh, owner, founder, and managing director of Global Street Partners here in town, where she helps companies navigate the complex world of real estate, among other services. And uh, Lee has 25 years of asset management experience and has completed about a billion dollars, a billion with a B, worth of real estate transactions in her career. So um, first of all, Stephanie, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Good, very good, thank you. And thank you for having me up on the show as well. Great, well, happy to have you. And I wonder if you could just start out by telling us a little bit more about Global Street Partners and your mission there and, and how long you've been in business. Well, it's brand new. It is about two months old. Uh, I have, um, well, it's new and uh, I don't have a background in real estate. My background is in business strategy. Mm -hmm. And uh, before real estate, I've been in real estate uh, industry for about 10 years. Before real estate, um, I was uh, a HR executive um, with companies like Cargill and Courage Center. And I have led uh, business growth uh, efforts, turnaround efforts, corporate development, M&A efforts. And uh, what I've done um, with all that experience is basically, you know, take that experience, lean into my strength, apply it to the real estate, uh, the world of real estate. And it's just allowed me to, um, you know, bring that advisory services and business strategy alignment aspect uh, to tenant representation in addition to just doing the transaction. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that's, that's what a, a Global Street Partner does. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, we provide uh, strategic uh, commercial real estate services, and it, it's just allowed me to be able to, with a unique business background, it's allowed me to just look at the whole business and bring that business understanding to the commercial real estate, commercial real estate space and to allow us to impact enterprise value rather than just occupancy cost. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't know if you want to mention any specific clients or anything, but how's it going so far? So far, it's been going great. Um, specific clients, some of my longest clients has been uh, companies like North Rock Partners. Um, I recently signed a lease for uh, Northwest Area Foundation last week. Um, currently working with Prepare and Prosper for to find a new space. Just opened a outlet uh, location for Boxer Homes. Uh, in northern northeast more northeast Minneapolis. So those are some recent deals that I've done with some of my good clients. Okay, and I know you uh, previously worked for uh, Carlson um, companies. Carlson right? Park. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Worked with uh, Ted Carlson there, and tell us about that and what was that experience like? Wonderful. Uh, my experience with Carlson Partners has been amazing. Carlson Partners has been a wonderfully trusting and nurturing environment that I grew up in in this industry. Um, I have a mentoring relationship with Ted Carlson. He has mentored me for the majority of my time in the industry, uh, and we remain close today. He is very supportive of, of uh, this transition. And, you know, when we decided to transition to this new opportunity, Ted and you know, the rest of the company were incredibly supportive. You know, they allowed me to take all my clients uh, with me, made the process really seamless. And, you know, I'm just starting a new company with clients um, that came along with me. So what more could I ask for, you know, besides feeling really, really grateful for my relationship with him, uh, for my, you know, totally grateful for the generosity, their generosity um, at, at Carlson. So very positive experience. Yeah. And we talked about your 25 years in asset management experience. Um, tell us how you got into this line of work and what what that journey has been like. Yeah. Um, so when I did a lot of, most of my experience is in asset management, is primarily in business strategy. And so as I'm working with companies to, look at their growth plans or mergers and acquisition, corporate development plans. Uh, often I find that, um, you know, real estate, payroll, technology, those are the largest ticket, big ticket items in every company. 
And so what I, I realized is, you know, because it's such a big ticket item, this commercial real estate is such a leverageable asset that a company has, oftentimes it shouldn't be an afterthought. It shouldn't be a reactive strategy. And so what I've learned is, you know, just really honed into what are the biggest drivers for a company's growth. Uh, and that's how it, I slowly came into real estate where, you know, I realized that, you know, it there needs to be greater attention and greater uh, intentionality when it comes to real estate uh, for a business. So that that's really what has brought me, you know, into the real estate business so that I can add that value to a company mm, and okay. elevate that conversation. Yeah. Well, what what uh, what is your outlook for uh, commercial real estate market here in the Twin Cities? I know one thing we've noticed is that the sales seem to have slowed down here um, this year compared to previous years. So you know that seems to be slowing down a bit. But what 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 are, what are you seeing out there, and what is your outlook going forward um my outlook is positive um you know it's two sides of the coin right it's it's you know you can either be you know struggling or and 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 there is activity to look at how you redefine uh how you approach real estate or you can be a well capitalized company and capitalize on you know opportunities so you know, I think it all speaks, it all goes back to the advisory component because not every solution, while we are in volatile times where interest rates are going up and when, you know, the workforce, you know, there's a shortage of talent uh, and, and the labor market is tight while there is the hybrid uh, work situation, uh, oftentimes it's really what a company uh, wants to how a company wants to approach and what their purpose of real estate is is an opportunity where we are seeing a lot of companies um, really stepping back and thinking about what they should be doing and hence you know every solution for each company is going to be different even though we do see trends like you know companies making a decision to leave downtown or come downtown is not always following a trend is about really figuring out figuring out where your path is. And it's more that, more important than ever post-pandemic with all these uh, nuances to be able to use the right data and have the right advisor on their team to help them think through what some of these strategies could be so that a company can balance the flexibility that they need with the stability and the sustainability for long-term as well. Yeah, so and for it's, me, it's it's to answer your question. For me, it's a, it's now's the time to really dig into, you know, really figure out what what a company wants to do. And for use sure, the and, that they have. Yeah, and and um, it's not a one size fits all approach either. Obviously, you've got some people might be notice where where their company thrives in a certain situation with the hybrid work environment or people working from home and others might want to have that presence in downtown Minneapolis or whatever. And so you can work with them and walk them through on what their goals are and how to best, uh, you know, meet their company's needs. Right. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so uh, just to back up a little bit more, uh, are, tell us a little bit about your background. Are you from the twin cities? Did you go to school here? What was, what's your, um what's your story <laughs> <laughs> uh no i'm actually hometown is actually singapore okay uh, and i grew up in australia and i did my undergrad in australia and came here 25 years ago for work uh as part of the hr executive uh mm -hmm. role that i took on uh and stayed here ever since and you know went to did, did my mba at um u.s st thomas so i'm a tommy um, as well. So this is, has been home for 25 years. My kids nice. are also born here as well. Nice, nice. You ever get back to Australia or Singapore? Or... <laughs> yeah, I do. I We, we try and I, my mom is still there. So we take mm -hmm. the kids home to visit grandparents um, mm -hmm. in Singapore. My brother still lives in Australia. So we visit Australia regularly. 
Wonderful. Well, you know, you talked about talked a little bit more about um, you know your your outlook for uh, real estate and things like that. Um, is there anything else that you'd want to add, or any other trends you're seeing out there um, in the marketplace? Or I guess what's what 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 would you say is I guess uh, you know anything that I might not have thought to ask or um, you know as far as uh, what what you're seeing out there. I think I'm, what I'm also seeing is a lot of um, investors, a lot of companies are, as they are rethinking their real estate, they're also looking at their foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, real estate has a lot of times been opportunistic uh, for a lot of the investors. But at the same time, you know, what we are really also seeing is the companies that are most successful are also the ones that focus on building that foundation for themselves. You know, having good fundamentals in place as well. Um, in addition to obviously being opportunistic and capitalizing on it, so I'm seeing people going back to the fundamentals. Mm, great. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I, I do appreciate it. It's been nice chatting with you, and hopefully, we can stay in touch and uh, talk more in the future about uh, real estate trends and and. Um, you know what's going on in this world so thank you for having me and for sure we can stay in touch yeah thank you for your time take care my pleasure bye-bye goodbye